Welcome to day 106 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover 1 Kings chapters 4 and 5. And we're going to start into Luke chapter 23 by covering verses 1 through 25. So as we pick up in 1 Kings, because God gave Solomon wisdom, it says there was peace, safety, and prosperity during Solomon's lifetime. And I just kind of want to start there and say, do you want peace? Do you want peace around you? Do you want safety? Do you want prosperity? Then start asking God for wisdom. That's what we talked about yesterday, and we're going to continue on that path today. And as we talk through the life of Solomon, just continue to ask God for wisdom. I'm not going to ask, yes, I want peace, I want safety, I want prosperity. But if I just simply ask God for wisdom, some of those things will start to fall into place. It says, God gave Solomon great wisdom and understanding and knowledge as vast as the sands of the seashore. His fame spread because he was so wise. It says he composed over 3,000 proverbs, over 1,000 songs, and we're going to get to experience some of those proverbs coming up in the book of Proverbs as well as Ecclesiastes written by Solomon. It's just a small portion of all the proverbs he wrote. It says kings from every nation sent their ambassadors to listen to Solomon's wisdom. So his fame spread. His wisdom was respected all over the place. And we know when David was the ruler, when his father David was the ruler, David could never build the temple. And the reason was because the enemies hadn't been defeated and there was wars all around him. But now there's complete peace and Solomon can now build the temple. So remember, Solomon asked for an understanding heart, a mind to hear, listen, and obey. So I just want to take a moment and pause and say, Father... Father in heaven, today my prayer is that you give me and give everyone who's listening a mind and a will to hear you, to listen to you, to obey you. God, I ask you to give us wisdom just like you gave Solomon. We ask for your will to be done through that wisdom, that we wouldn't make selfish decisions, but we would use the wisdom you give us, the knowledge through the wisdom you give us, to accomplish your will, Father. I just pray that over you today as encouragement, that we would all have that same mind and will that Solomon asked for, a mind and will to hear, obey, and listen, and have the wisdom that God has available for us. As we transition over into Luke, we see the Pharisees have condemned Jesus. They're getting what they want. They want him put to death. Now, They send him before Pilate, the Roman governor. Now, this is our third time to cover the same series of events. Obviously, Luke's take on it is a little different than the previous two, but it's the same story. Pilate finds nothing wrong. Oh, but he's causing riots. See, when they made their case against Pilate and Pilate said nothing's wrong, they just manipulated and changed the case. The goal is they're going to keep changing the game until they strike a fire, uh, a fear, I'm sorry, until they strike a fear in Pilate. So they didn't get him with their first accusation, so now they're going to try to turn it and say, but what would Pilate be worried about? He would be worried about riots, because he is supposed to govern this area and keep things at peace. So they shift the game and say, Jesus is causing riots. They're trying to strike this fear in Pilate, and you know, this still happens today. When someone doesn't get what they want, oftentimes in government or power, a leader, they will make accusations against someone to try to, to, try to strike fear in someone to get that person to act differently. We still see that going on today, and that's what we see the Pharisees doing here. Pilate kind of says, you know, in my terms, I can play your game too. Oh, you say he's Galilean? All right, take him to Herod because... Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction. So Pilate says, okay, I'll play your game. You're trying to strike fear into me. I'll send him off to someone else. Wipe my hands. Says Herod's actually excited because he wants to see a miracle. It's almost like it's a circus act. He wants to see what Jesus can do that he's heard about. But when when Herod asks questions, Jesus doesn't answer those questions. So he can't get the answers. He can't get the miracle he wants. 
So he puts on a purple robe to mock Jesus and sends him back to Pilate. You see, nobody wants the blood on their hands. Politics have existed since the time of Jesus because we're watching a political game. The Pharisees want rid of Jesus because Jesus threatens their power, so to speak. And they're trying to pawn him off on a pilot. Pilot doesn't want any part of it, so he tries to pawn him off on the Herod. Herod doesn't want any part of it, so he sends it back to Pilate. This is just a huge game of politics. Herod and Pilate both found him innocent of the charges, but Pilate does order him to be flogged. So he says he's innocent of the death charge, but we will have him flogged. Now, here's a little side note. To be flogged meant to have your bare back whipped with a lead-tipped whip. So to be flogged was still a pretty harsh punishment, harsher than anything we can probably imagine. Lead-tipped whip literally ripping the flesh from Jesus' back. And we know from Scripture he took on 39 lashings. 39, it took 40 to kill a man. So what they would do when they flogged him is they would literally take him to the brink of death with physical torture. So let's don't lose sight of how much pain Jesus' body took on. Remember when he's praying and it says he's He's sweating blood. It's a terrible thought to think about him hanging on the cross and suffocating. But do we really stop and think about how terrible it was for him to just get beat with his lead tip whipped and his skin ripped and muscles ripped? Excruciating pain that we can't imagine. If I get a splinter in my finger, I'm crying and I can't lift something or I can't touch something. Jesus is out here getting the flesh torn off his back 39 times to the brink of death. But what happened? It says the mob just got louder and louder. So Pilate thought, okay, I'm going to have him beaten and that'll satisfy everybody. But it didn't satisfy them. The Pharisees just incited the mob to get louder and louder. And finally Pilate caved. I think the point that I see here is that we see the same thing in our world today. Obviously not with the Messiah. The Messiah has already come. I'm saying the same tactics, the same politics, and ultimately people making decisions that are the wrong decisions out of fear. So guess what? This ties right back into Solomon. Guys, we live in a time right now. You're living in a generation right now that's unlike anything that's ever been experienced before in unique ways. And we need to be asking God for wisdom to know how to navigate this time of life. We need wisdom right now more than we've ever needed it in our lifetimes to know how to navigate life because of politics, because of the crazy things happening in the world, because of good being called evil and evil being called good, because of fear-based control all over our society and lives and even in our churches sometimes. I cannot emphasize enough how much we need to be asking God daily for wisdom. I think this part of Scripture comes at a very crucial time for some crazy things that have happened this week. This week we have the Supreme Court ruling one way on one ruling and ruling the opposite way on another ruling. That in and of itself is double-minded and Scripture says that that's unstable. So the most stable thing in our land, the Supreme Court, is showing unstable behavior. I'm not trying to strike fear because that is not what God wants. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But I am telling you, we need to be asking for wisdom right now. Wisdom, knowledge, discernment. We could probably throw some other words in there. Patience, endurance, perseverance. We need to be asking for wisdom more than anything right now to know how to navigate our crazy world. But as we've talked about in other scripture, it doesn't matter how crazy it gets. Jesus has always instructed us to keep our joy, keep our hope, keep our faith. We as Christians can rise above the evil in this world with the wisdom that God can give us. I hope you are encouraged today, and I hope you have a great day.